Hey, it's Tom, and today we're going to talk about the questions you might be asked while applying for a position of iOS developer right now in 2019. So before we will go to the questions, I have notes here on my MacBook. Let me explain how did I prepare this list. So at first, I asked my friends who recently changed their jobs, and they are iOS developers, of course, uh, what questions they were asked. Mm, the second source was me writing to a couple of companies I know uh, and asking what questions are they asking people who are applying for a position of iOS developers. And the, the last group of questions was prepared by me. Uh, I was just thinking about what questions would I ask a person who would apply for a posi position of iOS developer, for example, in a company which I'm working right now. Um, okay, so let's go to the questions. Before we will start with the questions, I noticed that there are a couple groups of, of questions which are being asked during the iOS interview. Uh, so the first group is uh, some kind of coding tasks. I mean, sometimes before you are even uh, accepted for an on-site interview, you have to prepare some, some app share some, some code. Uh, the best source of, of knowledge about candidate is, of course, GitHub. But uh, sometimes if you don't have any open source, the company may ask you to, to write a simple app uh, using some API uh, to just download the data presented in the form of, I don't know, list, collection view, and so on, to just verify your basic knowledge and uh, how you're writing the code, if you're commenting, are you handling the errors, and so on. So if you are already um, asked to come for an inside interview, then there are a couple groups of questions you might be asked. So the first group is uh, coding tasks. So, but, but you don't get the, the MacBook for, for live coding. Usually I noticed companies prefer to print some source code and ask you about the result. But we'll go into details in a moment. The second group is general iOS questions. So there are questions about the app architecture, uh, app behavior, some, some general things. And the last two groups are Objective-C related questions and Swift related questions. So uh, I know that most of you and most of source code for iOS apps uh, are currently written in Swift, but there are still some companies which have a lot of apps or a lot of source code written in Objective-C and someone has to maintain that. Mm, they don't mm, move into Swift because of different reasons. Sometimes it might be a banking app and they just don't want to, to they don't want to change the, the, the core or maybe they, ha they have some external SDK written in C, C++, and uh, they just prefer the interface of Objective-C. There are many reasons. Sometimes they just don't have enough money to, to write the app from scratch in Swift, so they just keep maintaining the app still in Objective-C. Okay, so let's go to the questions. So the first group was, as I mentioned, the coding task, and in this case you will get uh, a sheet of paper, usually, with printed source code. And then you might be asked to either um, find out what will be the output of this source code. For example, you will get uh, some tricky switch. Uh, other case might be to find a bug. In Objective-C, it might be a written cycle, so the strong reference to delegate. Uh, or in a Swift, you might see something like trying to assign something to a, a let variable or forcing unwrap a conditional value which is nil this kind of stuff okay let's go to the next group of questions the general ios questions so the first question is how we can achieve multi-threading on ios so in this case it's definitely worth to mention the grand central dispatch which is the low level so solution and NS operations. Um, you can talk a little bit more about NS operations because there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with, with them. They are definitely uh, more sophisticated. And 
then let's see what will be the, the next question because the interviewer may ask you what are the differences and so on. Okay, let's go to the next question. And the next question uh, might be something about the memory management or ARC. So ARC is an automatic reference counting. Uh, it was introduced uh, in iOS 4, if I'm correct. So it's a pretty old solution, uh, but still working and still very good. So automatic reference counting helps to manage memory and uh, allows system to know when memory man allocated for some object might be released. Uh, this question um, and the question about ARC may lead you to the questions about Objective-C strong and weak references, and, but we'll cover that later. Next question in this section is about the lifecycle of an iOS app. So in this question, you might be asked to list and quickly describe details or differences between different states in which iOS app can be. So there is a state in which the app is not running at all, it's inactive, active, in background, or it's just simply suspended. Let's go to the next question. So the next question is about the life cycle of a view controller. And it's mostly about the, the methods which are being called and in, in what exact order, uh, where should you uh, lay out your subviews, where, you, where should you initialize uh, some variables and so on. So it's definitely worth to mention that there is a view did, did load, view will appear, view did appear, view will disappear and view did disappear. And let's wait for a detailed question from your uh, from person which is interviewing you because describing all those methods and all details within them might take you a long time. <laughs> the last question in this section is my favorite because each person can give you a little bit different answer uh, and it still will be valid. So the question is about design patterns you know you're, you were using in iOS app, in Coca, you were using in Objective-C, in Swift, what are the differences? Uh, you can talk about it for a long, long time. So I noticed a couple um, patterns that are definitely worth mentioning on interview. So let's go to them. So the first one is the decorator. Uh, and it's worth mentioning because it differs a little bit between Objective-C and uh, Swift. So we have the delegation as a form of the decorator, which is similar on, in, in Swift and in Objective-C. But uh, in Objective-C, we had also uh, categories. And in Swift, we have extensions, which and both of them uh, might be um, assumed as a part of decorator design pattern. And they are definitely different. The second is observer. So we have the notifications and key value observation. Uh, the next one is singleton. It's widely being used in all languages, all platforms, and so it's, it's very easy to, to remember. And the next one is MVC, model view controller. Uh, the problem on iOS with this pattern was that we have a view controller and models. And as a result, we finished with the massive view controllers. Uh, which uh, in most cases were a huge problem. And, but recently uh, we got a MVVM, which is next pattern. So it's a model view view model. And this is uh, much more easy to manage. And in my opinion, a little bit better. Um, so we have a model view and the view model is uh, uses the bindings to to connect the view, which contains only the UI elements uh, and the model. Um, and before iOS 13 and Swift uh, 5, we, we had something called Rx Swift, which was using the reactive pattern. And this was definitely MVVM. And recently we got the Swift UI which implements the MVVM. And I think that uh, it will cause the RxSwift to become less popular. 
Next section is about Objective-C. There are only two questions because, as I mentioned, there are not so many companies which are still using Objective-C. Uh, let's go to the questions. The first question in this section is about the atomic and non-atomic properties. Uh, so it's about what are the, the differences, which uh, type is default. So default is atomic and the biggest difference is that atomic properties uh, are guaranteed to return you a fully initialized object. The next question is about the strong and weak references. What are the differences between them and which one is default? So default is strong and the difference is that uh, weak reference doesn't increase the reference counter for a part particular object and the strong reference uh, does it. So Arc will know that it it can't release the memory allocated for this object because the, the reference counter is still bigger than zero. Okay, let's switch to the next section, Swift. First question is about tuples. What is tuple? How to create tuple? How to access elements of tuple? Do elements of tuple have to be the same type? So let's quickly go through all of them. What is tuple? Tuple is a tool which was introduced to allow arranging different elements and, and values into one component value. It's much easier to re return a tuple from a method if you have to re return a couple elements and you don't want to create a struct or class. How to create a, a tuple in Swift? Uh, just simply put elements uh, separated by comma in round brackets. That's it. How to access elements of, of tuple? Mm. You can use uh, dot no notation. So to get the first element of tuple, uh, let's use the, the tuple name, which might be a parameter, dot zero, and it's the first element, dot one, it's the second element, and so on. Uh, do elements of tuple have to be the same type? No, they don't have to be. Next question is about differences between structs and classes. Uh, this is a very popular question, so uh, definitely read a lot about differences and what they have in, in common before you will go for an iOS interview. So classes and structs in Swift have a lot in, uh, in common, uh, but there are definitely two very important differences, in my opinion, that should be mentioned. Um, the first one is that classes can inherit from other classes, while structs cannot. And the second, and this is the most important difference, uh, is that the classes are reference types and structs are value types. So um, in a shortcut, if you create a copy of, of a struct ob object uh, and change this copy, the initial original object won't be changed because it's a, it, you changed a copy, not the original object. And in case of a class object, if you will create a copy, it's still a reference to an original place in memory. So if you will change the copy, the original, uh, the original uh, object will also change because that's only the reference. They both reference to the same place in memory, the same object. The next question is about keyword defer. Defer is a keyword which provides a block of code which executes when execution leaves current scope. That's a little bit sophisticated explanation, but uh, you probably know what I'm talking about. Next question is about lazy loading. Uh, lazy loading means that the value of lazy property won't be created or calculated until the first time it will be needed in the code. It can save you some, some time while initializing some, some view controller uh, if you know that some element might or might not be uh, needed later on. Another common question in Swift section is question about guard. So guard is a very powerful concept. Uh, it allows you to safely unwrap optionals and eventually quickly exit current scope of, of code. Uh, thanks to guard, um, we don't have a, um, a long list of if else, if else, if else. The code looks uh, much cleaner. Last question in this section is about access levels in Swift. So we have open, uh, access and public access, which allows our entity to be accessed from any source file within our module, but also from any other module. Uh, then we have internal um, level, 
which is the default one in Swift and allows uh, our entity to be accessed from any source file, but only within our current module. Then we have uh, file private, which uh, um, limits access only to the current source file, uh, but doesn't limit that to the current scope. And the last one, private, limits the access only to the current uh, scope. Okay, so we went through the all questions I prepared. Of course, these are not all the questions you might be asked. Uh, it always depends on the company, on the project they are working on. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed the video. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I will be very happy to, to answer you and help. See you next time. Bye.